If you are looking for the best Sorceress endgame build for Season 3, you just found it. This is the most complete Sorceress build I have put together yet, and I truly believe this is the build that will rule the leaderboards later in the season. Now this Blizzard Ice Spikes build has no weaknesses and specializes in massive AoE damage, high burst damage, unlimited mana, fast attack speed, unlimited teleports and superb survivability we're going to go over gear aspects pesky pet gems paragon points glyphs and it's really important to watch the whole video so you fully understand where all of our damage multipliers are coming from now before we get into it please make sure you give the video a like comment and subscribe it really does help the channel with the youtube algorithms and it would be greatly appreciated let's jump into the gear and aspects Ideally on your helm, what you're looking for is mana, armor, and life. If you can get at least those three, you're in a good position. And on top of that, the aspect that you really want to put here is Snow Guard. So while within your own blizzard and for three seconds after leaving, you take up to 25% less damage. And you will always be in your blizzard, so that is huge for survivability. For the chest piece, we're going with raiments. This brings the entire build together every time you teleport, and we are teleporting almost non-stop. We are constantly stunning enemies. As we're stunning enemies, we're doing that much more damage. So raiments is actually pretty critical for this build. Now in the glove slot, we're using Fist of Fate. This feels the best with this build. You get random hits, but some of those random hits go up to 300%. And when those do hit up in that 300% range, I mean, you're in the multiple millions and you're just eviscerating anything they touch. For the pants, we're using Tybalt's Will, and this build is built around teleporting constantly. It's almost impossible to kill you as you're teleporting because you're getting so much damage reduction, but at the same time, you're also gaining an incredibly amount of more damage as we're teleporting because as we teleport, we become unstoppable, and Tybalt's adds a lot of extra damage, but on top of that, it also adds a lot of primary resources. So this has a two-fold effect to it. We're getting a lot of damage and resources back every time we teleport and become unstoppable. So this is really helpful for the build. I really enjoy Isu's heirloom here in the boot slot. So you're gaining up to 75% movement speed bonus as you teleport, as you evade. But on top of that, you gain up to 29% of your movement speed bonus as a critical strike chance. Now in the weapon slot, we have the Oculus. This gives us the teleport enchant. Now when we combine the Oculus, Isu's, Typhalt's, Fist of Fate, and Raymond's all together, we basically become unstoppable all the time, 100% of the time. We have massive amounts of damage, and it's really hard to kill us because we have plus 30% damage reduction just from teleport alone. And then on top of that, as we're teleporting through our blizzard, we're gaining an additional 25%. So that's up to 55% less damage just with those two alone. That's pretty important for survivability. All right, on the amulet, you do not need plus movement speed because we're already maxing that out with Isu, so you really don't need that here. So what you ideally want to be looking for is plus armor and damage reduction of any kind. That'll be really beneficial for you. And plus ranks of Hoarfrost passive is great because it's giving you more damage to chilled and frozen enemies. Now, the most important part of any part of our damage in this build is to make sure that you put the glacial aspect on the amulet so when you cast your blizzard it will periodically spawn your exploding ice spikes and you want to get that number where it says 3620 you want to get that as high as possible if you can get that 3620 damage number that's going to take your damage and send it through the freaking stratosphere that number is so wanky on this build I don't know how to describe it, but even going from 3,300 to 3,600 will drastically improve your overall damage. All right, taking a look at the rings. Now, we have Ring of Starless Skies and Tal Rajas. Tal Rajas stays there, no doubt about it. That's best in slot. Now, Ring of Starless Skies feels amazing with this build. Now, if you don't have it, Blue Rose feels awesome too. It, be, it comes really, really close to overall damage and you get a massive cost and mana reduction. So either one, Blue Rose or Ring of Starless Skies is great. Just Ring of Starless Skies just barely beats it out in overall damage. 
Now, stat you're looking for on your focus is plus critical strike chance, lucky hit, mana cost, and cooldown reduction. On top of that, the aspect you want to put here is Ancient Flame. So as we activate our Isus Ferocity Key Passive, we're increasing our attack speed by up to 50%. And I will include a link down below in the description to the build link itself. So we'll go over the entire skill tree so you'll know how to put that all together. I'm just bypassing that skill tree point right here in the video just to make Make it a little bit shorter. All right, here's how we have the pet set up and it's for really good reason. So Flash of Adrenaline is a flat 20% damage bonus 100% of the time when you combine Duration, Tactical, and Safeguard. Now, if you happen to get lucky and you get Genesis to drop, that's gonna take that 20% damage bonus and make it a 50% damage bonus. If you do get that, your damage is gonna go through the roof. Now, we're also using Tempest because it attacks so fast. It has a 0.8 second attack speed, and that's good because when we combine that with Breaking Support, as it's attacking, it's constantly making enemies vulnerable 100% of the time. So you're always attacking a vulnerable enemy. And on top of that, as it's attacking fast, you're getting 20 of your primary resource back. So you are never ever gonna run out of your primary resource and on top of that, it's fortifying you, making you tougher to kill. Here's a quick look at the Paragon and Glyph. So on the first starter board, we're going up on the right side and we are putting in Flame Feeder. Now Flame Feeder gives us extra damage to burning enemies. Board number two is Burning Instinct, and along with that, we're putting in the Glyph Reinforced, and primarily the reason we're using Reinforced is so we can get that flat 15% damage reduction. So when we combine that with the damage reduction of Teleporting of 30%, and on top of being in our Blizzard of up to minus 25%, Boy, that really takes it up to almost 70% damage reduction. That's really beneficial in helping you be a tank as a sorceress. That's pretty powerful. All right, board number three is Enchantment Master. And along with that, ideally what you want here is Elementalist. I still need to upgrade my Glyph so I can get the extra, extra bonuses here. So as you're dealing cold, lightning, and fire, you're gonna have up to an added 15% damage bonus. So we'll get that updated soon. But if you have this updated, that's gonna benefit you tremendously. Paragon board number four is Icefall, and along with that, we are using the Glyph Winter. So whenever you chill or freeze an enemy, you deal 3% increased cold damage for 10 seconds, up to 15% flat damage bonus to chilled or freeze. That's awesome. Paragon board number five is Frigid Fate, and along with that is the Glyph Stalagmite. So those are the ice spikes coming out of our blizzard, and we want to have as much ice spike damage as possible. Paragon board number six is Ceaseless Conduit, and we are using the Glyph Destruction to increase our critical strike damage. And our final board number seven is Searing Heat, and what we are putting in for the Glyph is Control. We want to add more damage to crowd-controlled enemies. Now, as the enemies are chilled or frozen, they are crowd-controlled. So we have all these different magnitudes of different damage multipliers that add up that give us into the multiple millions every time we hit with our Ice Spikes. There you have it. That's going to wrap up the best Sorceress build for Season 3 in Diablo 4. I would like to thank each and every one of my subscribers. Thank you so much for your support. For the new viewers, if you guys enjoyed the video or learned something new, please consider supporting the channel by liking, commenting, or subscribing so you don't miss any future Diablo 4 videos. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.